Good morning. And then we'll put me spotlight so you can see what's going on here. And do a little adjustment to my. So this morning, I'm going to tie for you a uh, salt water fly. And you, you wonder why. Uh, it's for fishing for bonefish primarily. You probably wonder why. But last week when we were talking about fishing for pinks with gurglers, uh, Dave sent me a photograph of a, a fly he was using last year at Campbell River to catch pinks. And when I got the picture of it, I said, holy crow, that looked to me looks like what's called a crazy Charlie used for fishing for bonefish. This is one that I've actually used for fishing for bonefish. That's a crazy Charlie. And a crazy Charlie is just a, it's a relatively short hook. It's got some dumbbell eyes attached fairly close to the eye of the hook. The body is some sort of shiny material, sometimes red, sometimes clear, most of the time clear. And then the wing is basically some sort of hair that's tied in front of the eyes and usually a little bit of flash in there with it. So I said, well, I should be able to tie something that looks like that that might be useful for pinks. So going back to the pattern books and stuff, this is, <clears throat> this is what I ended up with. Let me turn some lights on here. It's going to be better to see. So it's, uh, you can see it's got some flash in it. That's just crystal flash. And there's two different kinds of hair that I'm using for that particular fly. One is this white stuff. It's synthetic hair. And it's like this, this particular one's a little on the crinkly side. Um, and then the other, for the pink, I'm using this stuff. It's called yak hair. And I've had this for a number of years for tying saltwater flies from the fishing hall in Edmonton. And it's a natural hair, so it's a little, little softer. And it's not too pink. Now, if you can't use, get this stuff, what you can use is this stuff, which is a little stiffer. And that's called EP fiber. And because it's not, because it's magnetic, it, it gets squared off. So you have to play around with it to get the ragged end of it that you want to look like natural hair. Uh, and so that and crystal flash. And if you're buying crystal flash, this is the best way to get it. It comes in a tube. And I'll show you why that works. So that's basically what I'm going to tie. The hook is uh, these guys. It's uh, Hannock uh, number 10. It's a streamer streamer hook, uh, black nickel. It's, okay, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. Just quite a just a suggestion on 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 the hair. Uh, using yeah. tip tail is very successful for the same fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's a, called a gotcha. When you put a tail on it, it's called a gotcha. I'll come back to that. That's the why. <laughs> why it's different. So the same hook for for the gotcha and for the crazy Charlie. So that what I'm tying is called a crazy Charlie. And the difference between a crazy Charlie and a gotcha is on the crazy Charlie, the, the uh, eyes are dumbbell eyes. So, and I'll show you that too. This, they're, uh, they're a, uh, this, these ones are quite small. They're uh, brass with a uh, plated. And they're dark. And these are quite small because that's a small fly. So you're going to make the eyes the size of the fly to make sure it sinks. Um, and the eyes on a, on a Tracy Charlie are tied fairly close to the eye of the hook. And the body typically is transparent or, or silvery. And there'll be a little bit of flash in there. For the gotcha, the, we use dumbbell eyes not dumbbell eyes we use bead chain eyes you can see those are bead chain and they're tied further back from the eye of the hook and there's a, a tail of flash 
that's basically the difference between as the patterns are named. Gotcha has the tail, the, this guy doesn't. <laughs> so you can tie it either way. So Tony, you're right, you, you can tie them with, with a tail. So I got this in my uh, midge vise just so that you can see the, the gap there. Tighten down pretty good. So I'm using white thread for the this guy because I want that back end to be shiny when I put the stuff over it. Because it's a crazy Charlie, I'm gonna start the thread behind the eye and wrap it down the hook to about the one third point, give or take. That's, that's about one third of the way down the hook. Trim the end. And then I'm gonna wrap it back up to the quarter point. So I've got about a quarter of the shank length back from the eye. And I'm gonna make a little bump here by tying the thread over top of itself. And this is the, this is the Clou Bob Clouser trick for keeping the eyes from spinning around the hook. As you make that bump, they get the eyes out. I'll hold the, hold the thing at an angle right behind the bump. You can barely see that there with it sort of at a 45 degree angle. And I'll push the eyes up till the center of the eyes hit the bump. And I'll make a couple of diagonal wraps. Then I will twist them back square with the hook shank on the top, basically. Come on, I lost it there. There you go. Square with the hook shank and wrap diagonally from front to back couple of wraps. Make sure those are pushed up against the thread bump. See that? And then what I'll do is I'll make three or four wraps diagonally from back to front on one side, push it square, do three or four diagonally the other way until those eyes are perpendicular to the shank. And then I'm going to Go underneath and over the hook, underneath and over the hook, a couple of wraps. And then I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I found, I had this stuff that I was getting, this brushable super glue that I was getting from home hardware. It was called Home Bond, and it comes in this nice little plastic thing. But they don't carry it anymore. But I found at Canadian Tire, they carry this super glue in a brushable format, and it, it's cheap. And so I just take a little bit of that and I will dab it right between the eyes. And what that will do is that will sink in there and make sure the eyes, now that they're on their square, aren't gonna go anywhere. They're gonna stay there, not wrap around the hook. Okay, now the next thing is to put the, the body on this guy. And what I'm using here is V-rib. It's, it's vinyl and it's uh, literally, it's got one round side and one side that's kind of a V-shaped. And I will put this right behind the eyes, wrap it down, get the tip of it good and solid, lay it flat on top of the shank, and I will wrap open wraps all the way back to the very bend and actually a little bit around the bend. Now, if you wanted to color the underside of this, you would use a colored thread and you would wrap that thread in touching turns all the way down and that would add some color to the body. So I'm gonna spiral it open to the front and then let my thread hang just in front of the eyes. Dave. Have you yeah. ever uh, uh, tried uh, painting the eyes on uh, on the on this pattern? No, I haven't, but you could. Um, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. Okay. I just did a little half hitch here, not because I'm going to use the rotary. I'm going to run the, the V-rib around the, 
the hook shank. I just want to get the thread out of the way. So now what you do is when you wrap this V-rib, it will, it will go flat. And so what you want to do is get the flat side facing the hook. That's why I want to do it with my spool keeper. Thanks to uh, Florin for making a whole whack of them for the club. And I'm going to wrap this up. Nice touching turn so you have this clear body that has sort of a ribbed appearance to it. When I get up to the eyes, there's the last wrap behind the eyes. So I'll bring it up and I'll put it between the eyes. Bring my thread in behind the eyes and do a couple of wraps in behind. And then I'll come in front and I will do a couple of wraps in front like that. Lift it up and couple of wraps in front, nice and snug, and then trim it. I don't want to put too much here because I want to keep the nose fair of this fly fairly tight. Don't want it to be too fat. And then I'll just tie that down. Now, because I've wrapped in behind the eyes and in front of the eyes, there's no way that puppy is going to unfurl on me. So now everything here from on is with the hook upside down because of course that's the way it's going to fish so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use this slightly crinkly white stuff and i don't need much uh, I, I want probably if it's compressed half a little more than half a gap width of material and I'm going to want the length to run from the eye to about that length behind the bend of the hook. So I'm going to take a little clump of that stuff. I'm going to trim it off within that sort of little three eighths of an inch from the front. And I'm going to just square that up a bit. And we'll do this thing like we do with a claws or minnow. I'm going to hold, get my thread right where the eyes are, hold it down so that the clump is just touching where the eye is at that angle. And I'll make the first wrap in behind and snug it down. And then I'll work my way up to the eye and then back to where the eyes of the hook, the dumbbell eyes are. Now that's a little on the long side. But that's okay, because what I want to do at this point is I'm going to kind of get little bits out of here. I, I want to rag it up the end of this a bit, because it, it's a man-made fiber. It doesn't have nice little points, and it's all even length. So I'm just going to play around with it until I get it about shank length behind the hook. And bringing the scissors in at angles, leave some long ones and some short ones, and it just makes it a little more natural looking. So far so good. Make sure that my thread is right up to those dumbbell eyes. Then we'll get crystal flash. And I'm not gonna use a lot of flash on this, just enough to give it some sparkle. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll take out of the tube, I push push it in like this. See how that tube keeps it nicely under control. <laughs> um, and then you don't end up with a package of crystal flash that looks like hell. I'm going to take about four strands of this stuff, and I need it like maybe we'll call that three to four inches of it. And I will wrap that around the thread, divide it half on either side of the thread, pick it up and put it on top of the hook shank to tie it down, a couple of wraps. Then I take half of that and put it on 
one side of the hook point, right, right laying in the crook of the eyes there, the dumbbell eyes there. And then I'm gonna wrap it down right up to where the eyes are so that half of the crystal flash is on one side and half on the other. Leave the thread hang there. They're a little long. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick them up and cut them just a hair longer than what the white portion is. Okay, now, leaving my thread again, about halfway between the eyes and the point of the hook, maybe a little closer to the eyes. I'm gonna put my pink stuff in. This is yak hair. And I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna pick out a little, about the same amount of pink as I've got for the white. Maybe just a hair more. I don't want a whole lot of color here because the, the color that I'm going to get is going to be from the nose. I'll show you that in a sec. So I'll measure that and I'll grab it. I'll do this trim again, a quarter, less than a little less than a quarter inch in front of where my fingers are bought. Got it. And you see again, I've got this uh, this squared off end in front of my fingers. I'll lay that down at that 45 degree angle with the pink just behind the eye. Do a loose wrap, snug it down, and wrap right back to the eye, and then finish all the way wrapping that pink down right up to the eye of the hook. Make a little bit of a head, not too big yet. Now let my thread hang and I get my pink thread now this is really pink thread but I want the whole thing to be pink and I will hold the thread from my bobbin hanging the white thread and I'll wrap pink in right behind the eye this is moved in the vise and I will wrap over both threads all the way up to the eye the up dumbbell eyes. And I'll come in here and I will cut the tip of my pink thread out. And I will take the white thread and trim that off right at the eye, right at the right at the nose. Right close. And then I will finish off. So that saves having to do a whip finish on the pink thread because I've tied it down underneath. And then I will wrap the pink thread back down the nose of the fly. My, my bobbin's a little tight. So that that nose is now completely covered with pink. And leaving that tapered from thick to thin right down to the eye of the hook. And at this point, I will take my whip finisher and I will do two whip finishes, just belt and suspenders. I get a little bit of hair in the way there. I don't disappear. There is a unruly, it goes just about everywhere, but where you want it, however, I'll clip it all together and snip it out. And then the last part of the operation is I get my Sally Hansen's hard as nails, and I will coat this guy. Now, some guys do this with epoxy, and I think the reason for the epoxy is that it tends to stay longer in the salt water, and it will help it to sink. Uh, and then we'll just make sure the eye of the hook is clear by checking it with the bobbin, the bodkin. 
And that's him. Now, if you think it's a little too long, again, what I can do is hold the hook like that and get my scissors in here. And by going in at various angles, I can make it look a little more natural and shorten it up a bit. Um, and again, depends on what you're, where you're fishing it. But I think this is going to be cast out and you don't want it too long or you'll get a bunch of short strikes. So I think that will do it. And because everything's evenly divided on either side of the hook point, of course, it's going to fish like this. So what, what David suggested he was using this was because that hook up position when you're fishing in Campbell River it keeps you out of the weeds from snagging a bunch of weeds. So that's him. Let me remove the spotlight here. There we go. So that's for this week. Now, for next week, I have one, one of the things I researched in my flies. Next week, I'll tie something a little different. Uh, this is a shrimp that we've used in the, in the salt water. And the difference is it with this guy is that the beach chain's eyes are at the bend of the hook and the body of the shrimp is, the tail of the shrimp is this way. And then the head of the shrimp is this way. And you'll notice he's got little eyes. So next week I'll show you how you do that. There we go. Warren, you're up. I'm looking forward to using that fly in the Campbell River in August. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's worth a try. As you can see, I'm putting the finishing touches on a practice fly. There you go. Dave, I don't know yeah. whether, whether in the uh, email, I didn't check it right now, if you put the size of the dumbbell eyes that you use? Yes, they're... Uh, oh, okay. These, these ones are... Uh, I got them from Robinson's, and they have them in a couple of different sizes. And these are uh, bra brass eyes. It's called size small color black. Oh, okay. uh, you can also you, you can also get them in extra small, but I thought the extra small were a little light. And yeah. you could you could use bead chain as well, although it's a little tougher to, to. That's why the on the bead chain ones you have to get further back from the the eye of the hook, or you crowd the eye because they're bigger. And the bead chain are uh, one eighth and one sixteenth. The yeah, about that. Yeah, about one sixteenth. Uh, and they're they're not quite as heavy as the lead eyes, so they 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 won't sink as quickly. Yeah, and the reason for that, you fish bone fish, you're normally fishing in anywhere from eight inches to maximum kind of two feet of water. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want and, it sinking too fast. Well, and not only that, you don't want it making a big splat when it hits the water. Exactly. Either. exactly. <laughs> That keep them keep them light so you don't scare the hell out of the fish. Dave, Dennis here. Got a question about bead eyes. Uh, would you consider tying them instead of beads with a cone so it doesn't hang up on the bottom as much or seaweed? Um, the reason for using dumbbell eyes and bead chain eyes is so that it inverts the hook. You want that hook to be point up. Because if you're, if you're fishing for bone fishing, you're fishing a bottom that's slightly muddy or it's marl, it's called marl, it's sort of a white fluffy bottom. And so if you're, if you're fishing it with the, uh, with the eyes on the other side, uh, it fishes point down and it gets hung up. Okay, thank you. So by being flipped over, 
uh, that hook is up. And, and when the fish comes in and bites from down the top on it, it's a little bit better to hook. And I'm sure Tony will tell you the same thing. He's, he's done that a bit. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've tied probably 300 bonefish flies. Yeah. Yeah, they all seem to float that that upside point up. Yeah. So it doesn't get caught in the moral. Or the reeds that they call the there's... coral. Sometimes you're or fishing for the coral, yeah, coral. Or the reeds that you grow, you know that you know that, that's the part with fishing for bonefish I found in Cuba was the hard part was that you get these lines of of, of reeds that are along the bottom. And trying to differentiate between a bonefish and a line of weeds was really hard. <laughs> You can't see the damn things. <laughs> no. Yeah, and if you do splat your line or fly, oh, yeah. you know, even if you the shadow from your fly going over their heads, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, you have to cast out a good three, four feet in front of them anyway, maybe more. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, just one more observation on that question on on dumbbell eyes versus uh, bead chains. If you fish a slow stream with shallow water near shore and the fish are holding in that shallow water, you want to use the uh, bead chain eyes because they're a little bit lighter. Yeah, They still flip the fly over, but it'll allow you to fish the shallows a little better. If you have stronger current and deeper water, you should use the dumbbells because they'll they'll get you down in the faster current. That's been my uh, yeah. my experience with fishing those on streams. Anyway, that's um, just my two cents worth. Uh, a week or two ago, um, I was in southern Alberta at a little operation that uh, makes wool yarn and they process small batches from farmers um, and they use some antiquated equipment, but they do make very nice wool. And it's uh, one of the last, if not the last uh, operating uh, mill in, in Western Canada. As far as I know, there's another one in New Brunswick and that's about it. There used to be one on the island that closed not that long ago and now the wool is going to waste basically, which is a shame. Anyway, so whenever you go to um, anybody that sells uh, wool yarn to knitters, you'll likely find a basket where there is some unspun wool and it's dyed. And you'll find all kinds of interesting colors. So this time what I've picked is a, is a bright yellow. It's kind of like a lemon yellow. The other one is more like... Um, gold kind of color, golden yellow. And the other one is green that I thought, yeah, you know, this is something that would work for a lot of these insect green patterns, damsels and whatnot. So and lemon so and cucumber. Thought, sorry? Lemon and cucumber. Yeah, lemon and cucumber dressing. As long as you put some olive oil, it's going to be good. Uh, and here's the olive oil, right? Um, so I thought to start with uh, something that's not too hard to tie, to try some color variations on the on the dock Spratly. So basically all I've done is I kept the uh, standard pheasant tail wing. And then for throat and tail, I'm using some um, guinea body feathers, guinea fowl. Uh, they come typically, you can get orange, you can get uh, red dyed, and you can get all oh. green as well. And I think there's also, I have some blue, and I, I didn't think of tying some with blue, that, but that, that might be another interesting color. So I thought of just matching these colors in, in some way, and I've done some with yellow bodies in those two shades of yellow. I've done some with green body. And uh, I'm thinking this should work as little, little streamers. What I'm using here is 
a size 10 book. This is a 9672 Mustad. Uh, some people prefer to use longer shanked uh, streamer hooks. I don't like those too much. So this is as, as long as of a shank that I'm, I'm willing to use. And I like these things to be somewhat small, hence the size 10 hook. Um, I tie them in down to 12s and eight would be in my books a fairly, fairly large hook. So tie your thread on the thread is just some standard eight odds so it doesn't add too much bulk to the fly. Now, when I tie these uh, with the soft hackles and a lot of a lot of feather stuff, a handy thing to have that I I learned fairly recently is, and this was thanks to Wally, just have some water on your tying desk. Uh, especially, I guess I don't know if it's that much of a problem out there, but down here for sure, even just treating dry fingers with a with a dab of water will help you handle materials better. So here, what I did is I separated the tip of the guinea feather and pulled all the other fibers back. And now I'm just gonna tie this in with a couple of wraps. So one, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be very precise at this point, just kind of tight, but not pushing you're not pulling too hard on that on that thread so you can still after doing two two wraps of thread you should still be able not nah, this is too short see pull too hard uh what you want is just to adjust the length so here's my couple of wraps and then i pull i seem to be ending with <laughs> Okay, one more time, third time lucky. Let's see. Of course, I should probably just measure this and, and tie it on right the first time. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Secure. And then trim. Gonna keep this because we still need some fibers for the throat. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of mylar. And for this size, actually the smaller, the better. So size 14 is as big as you want to go with. Anything bigger is going to be really hard to handle. It's going to be way too large for this size of fly. And because I want silver on my fly, I'm going to tie the mylar gold side up. And then just this down nicely and stick it to the vise. Okay, now I have the mylar. I'm going to move the thread back. Okay, there. And I'm going to get myself the, let's say I, I put some red in the tail, I'm gonna use the gold for the body. And I need to get a pinch of, this is fairly long, fairly long fiber, right? So this could be uh, spun into into yarn. I'm just going to get a little bit of this stuff. Just gonna pull it and try not to break the fibers too much. Okay. Then you can do, you have choices now. You can just use this as regular dubbing you can, you know, just preform it a little bit. It, it makes handling a lot easier. And just spin it on the thread a little bit like this. And to make life easier, you want to Yes, I spun it a little too much. Um, want a few fibers here. You want to taper it off a little bit at the tip so that the fibers would catch. So there. 
if you want a tighter body, you can just spin all of this together with the thread and just wrap it like this. You can also put this in a dubbing loop. So this basically gives you the equivalent of using a fairly yarn side, uh, fine yarn on the body, as you can see. This is what I'm getting for, for the body at this point. And then of course, I got a little bit too much here, so that's not a problem, I'm just going to take it off the thread and secure it here at the head. I still need to back off a little bit because I need room for wing and the rest of it. Okay, now I've got my body and the next thing I'm gonna wrap the ribbing need to make sure I have the silver side up. This is not twisted. So here are a few spiral wraps. leaving the body a little bit fuzzier and softer. So don't kind of over spin or over tighten the body because then the mylar is gonna be sliding on it. If you want to do a very tight body, then you shouldn't be using mylar. You should be using some other kind of tinsel. And the one, one thing I like to work with is this flat wire that bites well into the wool body. Okay, so now at this stage, we wanna put on the throat and I'm going to use the same fibers that I used for the tail. So now I'm going to go back to where I was and separate a little bundle of fibers like so. And then again, to make my life easier, I'm going to dip those in a little bit of water. This will make the fiber stick together much better. And I'm going to put those things here. A couple of wraps. And pull a little. Get my length. It's about right for a throat. Secure. So here, when you when you tighten the thread up against the body, it's also going to lift your throat up. Here, trim, and we're ready for the wing. And what I do at this stage is I have this leftover stuff, I always like to trim it off so it's ready for tying the next fly. This way, I don't, I already have this in my hand, I may as well do it now. Okay, and I'll turn it around <clears throat> for the wing, and that's just straight pheasant, and you'll find that in fact, that for this size of fly, the, the shorter fibers at a base of a feather of a tail feather are going to be better, the better ones. Just get a little clump here. A quarter to three eighths of an inch is is ample. Just pull it off the, the tail feather, and again here I find it easier to get it a little wet. The fibers will stick nicely together. And then I'm going to measure so that the tip of the wing reaches the tip of the tail. Get this nicely aligned here and on top, one, two, three solid wraps. And there's our wing. Okay. Now you could, uh, you could just build a head with some Peacock curl would be one thing, but then I wanted to just stick with the same um, with the same wool throughout. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this. So here I don't need much. I'm just going to dub a little, a little bit for the head. 
again my fingers are very dry so i'm just getting my fingertips wet with a little bit of water of course you can use the old fashioned spitting method but this is a bit more elegant here Cover the base of the wing nicely. And front. And it's, this is quite springy wool. It's not. It's not the very soft kind. So it does require a little bit of pulling and stroking here to get everything so behaving and fill in the gap here behind the eye of the hook and a couple of whip finishes. One. Done. That's the fly. And then you can change materials and covers and you get different different looking things. And that's it. It's a relatively easy fly to tie. Warren, how do you fish it? Uh, like a little strimmer. Cast and strip. Short strips, longer strips. Try your luck. You know, um, you could, I presume you could you know, I've never seen these done with uh, cone heads or anything like that. But if you want heavier, um, I think what would look good on on something like this would be a little a gunmetal cone head. That might be if you want weighted. Weighting the body with wire would be a little bit trickier because then you, you know, building the body over the over the lead wire and then putting the the ribbing might prove to be a little bit more challenging. And if you don't like the the wide banding from the from the mylar going with the going with the wire gives you a more more discreet one. And another way of if you want to skip the um the mylar and the wire all together, you can do the wool in a dubbing loop using some crystal flash. And that would give you a very discreet or not so discreet, depending you can you can double up, uh, you can double up the crystal flash and use it instead of threads to build a dubbing loop. And that would give you um, a built-in kind of a sparkly core. It's like using a sparkle core chenille. So it gives you that slight ribbing effect, with just a bit of sparkle in the body, uh, you know, without being so in your face, like the um, like the so, mylar ribbing. So, so for and those for those who uh, don't want to travel to Southern Alberta to get your nice wool. Uh, Julie, well, you have good wool shops in Victoria, of course. There's Julie, the Beehive Julie, and there is the Julie. other one in yeah. uh, in Fernview. Oh, and there's Dave. Yeah. yeah. So, so Julie informs me that there's all kinds of local artisans who basically shear and dye their own wool. Uh, they're around, and there's what's the shop downtown? It's uh, oh, well, it's it, they're they're all over the place. They're just fiber art stores that yeah. have so that. This one is more like the raw wool that's dyed and comes in like 6,000 colors. And then this is being carded and dyed so that you can use it. And I don't know how that's different from what you were using, Lauren, but this would seem to be very similar to. It's, it's almost identical. It's just, yeah. uh, it looks like what you've got there is a lot softer. Mine came from custom woolen mills. And yeah. they they do fairly they, they do fairly rough fairly rough wool. Well, it's um it's a little bit scratchier. Well, and that might be like this stuff that's still got 
uh, it's it's a lot coarser to the feel yeah. and it would be it's considerably harder to work with but you, you can get not only sheep but you can get alpaca i've got alpaca that you can just pick up like i i don't know if you have to go to a custom woolen mill i think you just need to no you to don't a, i i just to happened it. to be there the whole point yeah. of it was yeah. If you happen to be in one of these places, uh, go and rummage around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there will be, they usually sell this for felting and other purposes. I found yeah. at the uh, at yeah. the little shop that's uh, down there by pretty close to the water, I think, in Fernwood, they had some. Uh, oh, they, no, they've moved actually. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they're now. Um... Oh, did they, well, did they move next Fern to the Belfry? Yes, right across from the Belfry. It's called okay. Naughty by Nature. Yeah, and they've got... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Naughty by Nature, yes. Yeah. They, one time I found there some uh, silk, also yep. kind of just raw silk dyed, just a yep. plain fiber. Yes, so, silk floss. Um, there's, there's a couple of other suppliers of silk floss, uh, uh, one up in Brentwood Bay that has the silk floss as well. Yeah, but so this is just work like work. a little hank that I asked the guy, I said, I don't need much. Can I just break a little piece? And he's like, yeah, no problem. Take however much you, you like. So it's, you know, minute quantities yeah. uh, of stuff you can you can buy. Anyway, there there you go. If if people are looking for, for wool for doing that, there's scads of it around. Yeah. You don't have to go to Robinson's and pay exorbitant prices, in exactly. other words. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, this was yeah. like... Yeah, and I just wanted to yeah. kind of... <laughs> bring bring wool back to to attention because this 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 was uh you know very much the traditional material for for dubbing uh fly bodies for a very long time yeah and i think too if you loose dub it that that wool tends to capture air that that gives it a little shinier appearance yeah it's not as um seal fur has the advantage of of having that extra translucency. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's like this. Wool is giving going to give you a slightly more opaque fly. Silver is going to give you a bit of translucency. And if you tie with polar bear hair streamers, yeah. save the under fur. Yes. Yeah. In little Ziploc bags and that is the most amazing dubbing material. It's got that translucency of the bear hair. Yeah. Uh and it can be it can be dubbed as well. And that's not something you can buy. The only way you can get your hands on that is by um by, by saving saving your bear your your polar bear. Yeah. I think I think we talked about polar bear and why it's such a special material for tying streamers and stuff is because the polar bear hair is actually hollow. And the it's it's like a, a, a light pipe because the the polar bear skin is black, and the hair, which is white, has this hollow waveguide down the middle. So the sun that hits the outside bounces down the inside of the hair, hits the black skin, and turns to heat. That's one of the ways they manage to stay warm in the Arctic. And so it's that translucent, hollow nature of the bear hair and the fur that just give that iridescence, that gives the voice that you use them on uh, just a little bit extra life to them. I mean, if I'm tying clousers for fishing for gold, I'm using polar bear most of the time. Good. Well, I see we're coming up just about 11 o'clock. So we'll go again next Saturday. And I'll, I'll tie a shrimp. I don't know what if Lauren has anything in mind. Uh, not necessarily. I was going to do something. Maybe I'm going to do some dubbing brushes because I've got some. Uh, I've got some wire here that I want to I want to try out. So. If you have a piece of broken electronics uh, before you throw it away, uh, pull the wire from inside. I'm not sure exactly what this came from, but it's got some really nice wire. Uh, I got an old spool that was empty and I spooled. It took 
a little bit more than half of what was on one of these windings. Yeah, yeah. And I, I filled up a spool here. It's like, a, it's a ton of wire, really. And it's it's a good it's a good tying size. So you could use this for ribbing um, nymphs comfortably into size 16, 18. Mm -hmm. Size 20 flies, it's maybe a little bit thick, but yeah. We, so we don't use size 20 may... flies. <laughs> Sorry? We don't use size 20 flies out here. <laughs> we don't we don't have the uh, high nutrient lakes that produce lots of daphnia and small insects. No, I don't. I don't fish size twenty um, things on 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 lakes either. It's that's more of a stream, yeah. stream thing. And I understand you'd have to drive to the to the cowich and to uh, to make use of anything yeah. like that. But yeah, I don't see any reason why the cowich would not uh, respond well to size twenty. Chironomids and and stuff like that. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thanks, guys. Start the recording on, Dave. Yeah, I'll stop that now because we had a nice discussion. Um, what you're gonna delete before posting, right?